Welcome to The Deep Dive, where we tackle the research that matters and give you the essential knowledge to stay ahead. Today, we're diving into the emerging AI economy, but um, we're deliberately looking past the really dazzling generative models and algorithms. Our focus is on the money, hmm. specifically where the truly massive long-term economic value is predicted to be captured. We've got a stack of sources, and they're heavily centered on the strategic positioning of a company named Metallicus. And what they suggest is something, well, something pretty counterintuitive. The idea is that the AI model itself might just be the interface, while the underlying financial infrastructure, the rails, that's gonna be the actual source of wealth. Yeah. So our mission today is to understand why the infrastructure is predicted to win and you know, what controlling those rails really means. It's a crucial shift in perspective. You know, for years, AI was this abstract tool. Great for optimization, great for generating content. But now, mm -hmm. now we are moving very rapidly toward autonomous agents. Mm -hmm. And you have to ask, what happens when these agents go from just writing draft emails to autonomously managing millions of dollars? Actually, Paying bills. Paying real bills, issuing real credit, managing serious financial portfolios. At that point, the AI, it stops being just a piece of code. It starts needing the exact same robust, regulated, and auditable framework that a bank or any traditional payment network relies on. You need a rule book. They need the rule book, and they need the ability to prove they followed it. And that, according to the deep analysis we've been looking at, that points us to the core economic choke point the metaphor that really dictates who controls the flow of value. So, okay, let's unpack this, this idea of the toll booth. Mm -hmm. The central premise here, the real argument, is that in this new AI economy, the companies building the big models. The open AIs, the Googles of the world. Exactly. They might be democratizing intelligence, making it accessible to everyone, but they're not the ones who are going to capture the most, you know, the most lasting value. Right. The real winners the next generation of infrastructure giants will be those who control the required infrastructure that every single financial transaction has to pass through. It's all about control over access and compliance then. Absolutely. If the AI brain can decide to move money, something else has to ensure that move is legal, that it's secure, and that it settles instantly and reliably. This required gateway. That's what our sources are calling the toll booth. And it's not just one thing, right? It's not a simple API. No, not at all. It's a necessary bundle of critical functions. You can think of it as like the six non-negotiable checks every AI financial agent has to pass before it can be trusted with a real transaction. Okay, so what are these, these six gates? Because just listing them is one thing, but understanding why they represent such a massive barrier to entry, that's the key. The components are identity, payments, data permissions, compliance, settlement, and access. And to illustrate why this is so hard, imagine an AI agent decides to buy stock on your behalf. It needs identity to prove it's your agent. It needs data permissions to prove it has the right to access your trading data. It needs compliance to prove the trade follows all regulations. And settlement. And settlement to guarantee the money is instantly exchanged for the asset. You can't have any one of those fail. Wait a second. If the foundational AI companies, Google, OpenAI, Anthrop, I mean, these are the most heavily funded entities on the planet. Yeah. Why can't they just integrate these functions themselves? You know, buy a bank, get a license, solve the problem. Where is the actual moat here? That is the critical question. Yeah. And the analysis suggests that while they could theoretically build it, they're deliberately choosing not to. Right. Their core business is intelligence, not regulated financial liability. Integrating true compliant, instant financial infrastructure. I mean, that requires a massive, complex organizational shift. Mm. You're talking about regulation, KYC, anti-money laundering controls, liability management. It just clashes directly with the culture of generative AI, that whole move fast and break things ethos. So it's a culture problem as much as a tech problem. It is. And it's not just about traditional API calls either. The sheer volume of traffic that autonomous agents are going to generate it needs a network built from the ground up for high speed, auditable and stable settlement. That is the level of financial rigor that, frankly, current AI developers are explicitly not prioritizing. So who exactly is lining up at this required toll booth? It sounds like pretty much every future economic actor. Precisely. It's not just the big headline AI agents. It's the entire ecosystem. Autonomous trading robots, consumer finance apps, digital wallets that are managing stable coins, any on-chain business that needs transactional intelligence to operate. They all have to line up. They all have to line up 
prove their identity, and pay the toll to use the compliant rails. Mm. And the entity that controls that bottleneck, yeah. well, they capture the lion's share of the value. And this is where it gets really interesting. The high state's reality of it all sets in. The source material outlines the kinds of high-value actions these AI agents are heading toward. And they are significant. They carry massive regulatory risk. Oh, absolutely. We're not talking about just scheduling meetings anymore. We are talking about agents that are autonomously managing cash flows, paying bills across different jurisdictions, hiring and paying other AI agents or even human freelancers, trading complex assets, subscribing to services. Managing wallets, and then there's the big one. Issuing credit. Issuing credit. That is the ultimate regulatory hurdle. An AI agent deciding to extend a line of credit. I mean, that requires proof of identity, risk assessment, adhering to fair lending laws. And auditability. Rock solid auditability. If something goes wrong, Regulators need to know exactly who made the decision, when, and on what basis. There's no room for error. So these activities create this inescapable need for that infrastructure we talked about. They do. And AI can have the intelligence to make a decision, but without that mandatory financial scaffolding, the decision is either meaningless or it's illegal. The controls are non-negotiable. You need identity, robust compliance frameworks, explicit KYC know your customer, and, crucially, stable settlement, auditability, and regulatory protection. Let's focus on one of those for a second. Stable settlement. Why can't the AI just use the existing banking infrastructure for that? Why does it need stable settlement on dedicated rails? Well, the existing bank infrastructure is often slow. It's geographically fragmented. It operates on these badge processes from, you know, decades ago. It's not instant. Not even close. And autonomous AI agents, they might transact millions of times a second. They require near instantaneous finality and absolute stability of value to prevent risk and cascading failures. And the sources really emphasize that this level of speed and confidence, the stable settlement, is only achievable through specialized financial infrastructure, often using things like regulated credit union-backed stablecoins. So the core disconnect remains. The AI companies build the powerful brain, capable of brilliant financial strategy, but they are willfully ignoring the necessary financial and regulatory backbone, the bank. It's an intentional strategic void. And the research we've seen suggests one specific entity is moving very aggressively to fill it. That entity is Metallicus. Uh -huh. The sources consistently focus on their CEO's message, which is really a strategic positioning statement more than anything. Which is? We are building the rails. Yeah. They are deliberately framing themselves not as an app, not as an algorithm, but as the mandatory traffic controller for this entire new era of automated finance. Okay, so that brings us to the crucial question. If Metallicus is claiming to own this toll booth, what does that infrastructure actually look like? It can't just be a simple blockchain. Yeah. It has to integrate all six of those required functions we discussed. That's right. And the solution detailed in the source material is a comprehensive sequential tech stack. It's designed specifically to embed compliance from the ground up rather than trying to, you know, slap it on top of an existing network. Let's break down that stack for the listener because there's a lot of specialized terminology in here. Okay, so the foundational layer is the metal blockchain. You can think of this as the specialized network, the highway for money movement designed for high throughput, instant financial settlement. Then, built on top of that, you have the XPR network. This is often described as the communication protocol or maybe the on-ramp. It makes sure that all the transactions flowing onto the blockchain are standardized and compliant. So metal blockchain is the highway, XPR is the standardized on-ramp. Yeah. But what about identity? You said that was the most critical element for compliance and KYC. Right, and that's where WebAuth comes in. WebAuth is the identity solution, and it's absolutely fundamental. When an AI agent transacts, the system has to know who it is acting for, a verified, real-world entity. WebAuth binds a secure, verified identity to the digital wallet and the agent itself. So the KYC is done once and then enforced. Exactly. It effectively gives the AI agent a verified digital passport. And that immediately solves the identity and compliance parts of the toll booth. But what about the more complex stuff, like credit? The sources mention Loan and Pulse VM. Correct. So Loan provides the credit facility layer. This is crucial for those advanced functions, like autonomous credit issuance. It's what gives the AI agent access to capital, but within a compliant framework. And then finally, Pulse VM is the execution engine. It's the virtual machine layer that ensures the smart contracts and AI instructions are executed reliably with full auditability across the entire stack. So it connects the AI's brain to the financial rails. That's a great way to put it, yes. So it's a holistic system. 
WebAuth secures the identity, Metal Blockchain handles the fast secure settlement, and then Loan and Pulse VM handle the actual complex financial functions. And to prove this model, the sources point to a really fascinating example of a user-facing agent that's built on these rails. Yes, the Community AI Robot Kitty, or ARK. AIR. It sounds almost comical, but the sources use this agent to illustrate a very serious point. The AIRK isn't just a digital pet or a simple chatbot. Yeah. It's a functional, user-facing AI agent designed specifically to prove the utility and the value of the underlying financial rails it relies on. It's the application that validates the infrastructure. I love the quote describing it, an AI companion that lives on the world's most valuable financial network. It just flips the whole script. The value isn't in the cat itself. Yes. The value is the fact that the cat lives on a network that is robust and compliant enough to handle real financial transactions. Exactly. And this highlights the key strategic differentiator that the sources emphasize over and over. This new financial AI economy is being intentionally born on compliant financial rails. This is a deliberate contrast to previous crypto movements, which always prioritized absolute decentralization and pseudonymous identity. Right. The sources are very clear. For high-stakes, autonomous financial uses, you need regulation and verifiable identity built in from the very first line of code. They're basically stating this AI infrastructure is explicitly not being built on general decentralized networks like Ethereum or Solana for these uses mm -hmm. because those networks just lack the necessary built-in KYC and compliance layers. And that level of compliance first design is what makes the historical argument so compelling. You know, the whole rails win idea. Let's step back and look at the bigger historical context the sources cite. Why does controlling the infrastructure consistently lead to greater long-term value capture? Well, it really boils down to controlling the bottleneck and ensuring quality control. Every major technological shift creates immense value, but that value, it doesn't usually stay with the content creators or the front-end apps forever. It accrues to the necessary infrastructure providers who charge a regulated, necessary fee for access or for transport. The railroads. The railroads are the classic example. They didn't make the most money selling the raw goods they transported. They made it controlling the track. In the modern era, you look at payment networks like Visa and MasterCard. They don't own the money, but they charge a toll on every single transaction. And even the internet itself. Exactly. The companies that provided the pipes, the cloud computing providers, the infrastructure, they became the giants. And the most recent parallel, I guess, is the App Store model. Apple and Google, they don't create most of the apps. Not at all. But they control the gateway, the distribution, and the payment rails. And for that, they capture, what, 15 to 30 percent of the value? That is the clearest recent analog. They manage the compliance and the distribution access. And this historical consistency is what leads to the pretty dramatic prediction laid out in the research we reviewed. So what does this all mean for the future of the AI economy? The sources offer a very clear prediction. The next wave of trillion dollar companies won't be the ones that perfect the next generative model or create the most delightful consumer AI app. Right. They will be the entities that act as the AI traffic controllers on regulated rails. If autonomous AI agents are going to become legitimate, economically active actors making and managing money, they absolutely require this compliant financial scaffolding to exist legally and stably. So the core argument is simple. Intelligence is being democratized but regulated, auditable financial capacity is being centralized onto specialized infrastructure. And the sources. The sources conclude this analysis with a very confident claim that by building this compliance stack, Metallicus already owns the toll booth. That was a powerful deep dive into a side of the AI economy that often gets, well, overlooked. We started by exploring that fundamental shift in value capture, moving away from the models, the brains, to the underlying financial infrastructure at the bank. The, the toll booth. Right. We detailed the specific high-risk functions these rails must provide, identity, KYC, stable settlement, auditability, and we broke down the strategic positioning of Metallicus through its comprehensive compliance-first stack. XPR, Metal Blockchain, and WebAuth Identity. A complete system. And here's a final thought for you to carry forward from all this. If every major technology wave saw the infrastructure toll booths win, 
And knowing that today's general purpose AI models were built entirely divorced from any built-in financial compliance or KYC. A complete blank slate. A complete blank slate. So how quickly will that immediate and massive regulatory gap accelerate the adoption of these specialized financial infrastructures? The lack of regulatory awareness in the model layer, that might be the single biggest driver pushing the entire AI economy onto compliant rails, whether they like it or not. A truly disruptive possibility. Thank you for joining us for this deep dive into the future of regulated AI finance. See you next time.